Hi Booktube, Lynette here and in this video I thought I would talk to you about some of the books that I remember reading and loving as a child. Um, so I'm thinking from around about the ages of eight onwards. Uh, by the time I hit my teens I was reading adult books so I don't, I only have a short window of time where I really remember the books I was reading um, and actually still have any of those books at all to show you. Um, although one of them is probably going to go up on screen because I don't have a copy anymore. Um, my copy fell apart and was not fit for purpose anymore. Um, but yes, I thought I would give you an insight into what I was reading as an 8 to 12 year old. So one of the first books that I remember reading and absolutely loving is The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. This is book two um, in the chronological order of the Chronicles of Narnia series and it's one of my absolute all-time favourite books um, from when I was a child. Uh, it's um, I'm sure everyone, I don't need to go into it, but it's about the four Pevensey children who Lucy, the youngest, finds herself in a magical world and she then takes her older brothers and sister there with her and they save this world from an evil witch who was holding it captive in a permanent winter. They then obviously go on from there um, and the stories go on from there and this is just one of those that I remember um, having an imagination. I, I'm not a reader who pictures scenes in their head, I just see the words on the page appearing in my head as I read. Um, but this is one of those books that I actually remember that there being scenes in my head. And um, in the last 10 years or so, there's been a version of this made um, film-wise. Um, it had Tilda Swinton as the White Witch. And when I went to see it in the cinema, my partner that I was with at the time said to me, why on earth are you crying? And it was because it felt like someone had gone back to eight-year-old me and interviewed me um, to find out exactly what I saw because I was just seeing it there on screen in front of me. And I I just absolutely loved it. And it's one of the oldest books that I remember reading, uh, one of the first books I remember reading as a child. And it's one that I actually really enjoy rereading now as an adult as well. Um, so... I'm going through a reread of the whole series at the moment. I am up to book six. Book six and book seven, I don't actually remember reading. I did have them and I do still have my original copies down here. I was going to get the original copy that I read out for you of this one, but it's a big, thick, chunky book and it was a bit, it's in a bit of a tight spot on my shelves. Um, so I did struggle to take that one out. Um, so you've got this little thin individual copy instead. Um, alongside this one, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader is also um, one of my favourite, all-time favourites. And um, I've talked about that one in a previous video because I think I read it in December last year. So um, go find that if you want to hear my thoughts on The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Another book that I remember reading, and it's not really so much the book as the series, but I'll pop the first one in the series up on screen because that's the one that sticks in my mind the most. And that is the famous Five series by Enid Blyton. I read quite a bit of Enid Blyton. Um, I remember reading quite a few of her books. Um, but the one that sticks in my mind is Five Go to a Treasure Island, which is the first of the um, famous Five series. And again, it's uh, one of the first adventure series that I remember reading. And it, this time, instead of being set in a fantasy world like Chronicles of Narnia is, it's set in the real world. Um, the Famous Five, they go off and they have adventures and they solve mysteries and they do it all. There's a little hint of peril for them, but nothing really that's going to cause them any real harm. Um, nothing, they're not going to come to any harm at all, but it's it's a good, fun read and I really enjoyed them. And I, maybe one day uh, my nephew will let me borrow his box set uh, so that I can reread them all. Now the next book I've talked about in many videos before um, and I think you'll all be able to guess what it is when I tell you that it is my all-time favourite book and that is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is my original copy. Uh, the spine is fairly damaged, it's quite worn. Um, I read this book 
over and over and over again as a child. I picked this up when I was 10 years old um, and it's very battered, it's very bruised. I do not read this copy anymore. Um, I either read my Kindle copy or I read one of the other paperback um, or hardback copies that I've purchased in recent years because I'm fairly certain that if I were to open this up one of the pages is going to fall out. I adore this book. Um, it's about Bilbo Baggins who is a hobbit and he is um, employed by a group of dwarves as a burglar. Bilbo is not a burglar um, and he goes on many adventures with the dwarves and they um, they get into some trouble. Eventually they get to the Lonely Mountain which is their aim and um, trouble, more trouble awaits them there. Um, and yes, I fell in love with fantasy because of this book. This was the very first real fantasy novel that I ever read uh, and yes it's it's one that um when i got rid of my books i've talked about this in past videos when i got rid of my books uh quite a few years ago now this was one that i absolutely 100 percent flat out refused to get rid of um because it is my absolute favorite um and even though i was told well it's looking a bit scruffy it's a bit tired <laughs> it's got a rip across the front cover my books never look like this um this is not how I take care of my books at all. So that's a measure of how much this book is loved, is the state that it's in. Um, but yes, uh, I absolutely 100% flat out refuse to get rid of this book. This is my favourite of all time. Um, and I don't see that changing um, anytime soon. Now, the next couple of books are ones that hold very precious memories for me. Uh, they were actually given to me by my granddad um, not long before he passed. He actually passed away when I was nine. So again, these are some of the oldest books that I've ever had and read. Um, so they do hold lots of memories for me and they are very special to me. Uh, so they are ones that I do keep on my shelves. Um, but haven't really read since I was a child and I think that maybe I should. Um, the first book is, the, this is the second book in the series, but it's a series of books about a boy and a horse and the series is The Black Stallion. Like so this is book two, which is The Black Stallion Returns. I don't have a copy of the first book. I think maybe I probably got that from the library. Um, but my granddad picked it up thinking that I'd really enjoy it because I was at the age of, of eight, um, seven, eight years old, I was a very prolific reader even back then, um, reading books that were way beyond my age and ability or should have perceived ability. Um, so these these are ones that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so Alec Ramsey, the boy, he's found a horse on um, an island and they effectively save each other's lives. Um, the series then goes on to follow Alec and the horse who um, becomes quite a famous racehorse in America um, and it, go, it just follows the two of them and their adventures, the troubles they get into and then I think it actually goes on after this, it then follows on from um, the foals and colts and that are bred from the original Black Stallion. So they are a, a good series of books. Um, I think they're probably more for, they should really have been more for the 12 year old uh, me rather than the seven, eight year old me, but I did really enjoy them. I devoured them at the time. Um, into my early teens, after I'd had this one and read it for a few times, I did actually go and buy more of the series. I don't have the entire set, uh, sadly, um, because I was buying them secondhand at the time. Um, but they are ones I'd like to look and see if I could get copies so that I could reread the whole lot. And the second book that he gave me, um, I think my nan and granddad were actually on holiday because I think they were in a caravan and he, I just remember being handed this book and saying, read this, you might enjoy it. Um, and that book is Cheer the Wildcat by Joyce Stranger. Um, this is quite an old book. Um, I'm not sure where it came from, but the main character 
is a wild cat and it's told from her perspective as she's trying to bring up her kittens in the wilds of Scotland um, and the perils that a wild cat family faces. I remember really enjoying it. I don't think I read it very often. I think I only read it a couple of times at the most. But I remember enjoying it and I think some of um, the love I had for it was because it was given to me by my granddad um, not long before he passed away. Um, so I think there's probably a bit of nostalgia tied up in that as well. But it is one that is on my shelves and I'm thinking that at some point during this year I might give it a reread and just see what adult me thinks of it um, now. Um, because I don't really remember very much about it, um, only that the main character is a wild cat and that she has kittens that she's trying to rear and that's it. Um, that's the only bit of the story that I remember. So maybe um, some point this year we can go on a journey together and find out what this is all about. So I've kind of realised there's a bit of a theme going on with these books now. Um, see if you can spot it. Let me know down in the comments if you do. Um, but this book, I think, is one that I read when I was around about 11, 12. Um, and I think, from memory, originally it was a buddy read with a school friend. Uh, something which I'm not very good at doing. Um, but I do attempt to do buddy reads every now and again. Um, I don't think I was that successful as an 11-year-old. Um, but this book is Run to Earth by Tom McLaughlin. And this is about a fox family. Um, there might be more than one theme to these books. Uh, let me know if you spot them all down below. Um, but yes, this is about a uh, fox family. Um, <clears throat> the vixen has had cubs and they're trying to protect them. And it's about what happens when they are in peril. Um, I believe that something is happening in the valley where they live and uh, something that humans are doing uh, is causing... Um, disturbances and is threatening their habitat uh, so as humans were probably building um, I don't really remember but I remember enjoying it and I read it a couple of times and again it's another one that I'd really like to reread at some point um, and it's one that while a lot of other books kind of either got passed on to my sister and brother even though they're not really readers or got passed on to friends and family um, this is one that I hung on to. And again, it's another one that um, I can't remember whether my mum actually had this and gave it to me when she moved or whether it is one that I flat out refused to get rid of. Um, I think I did say I had to keep all my childhood books um, when I was getting rid of them. Um, but yes, this is another one that I'd really like to have another go at reading at some point. Um, this next book was actually my sister's and she handed it on to me. Um, and she told me that she doesn't want it on shelves anymore and I can keep it. Um, and Kai, I haven't forgotten. I am going to, if I haven't, I am going to bring this into work for you. Just keep nagging me so that you can borrow it. Um, but yes, this next book is The Silver Brumbury Stories by Elaine Mitchell. Um, this is about um, a breed of horse called Brumbies and they live in the Australian outback. The main character is Thora, who is trying to save his herd from um, a gang of horse thieves. Uh, there are three, it's called Silver Brumby Stories because there are three books in one in this um, particular copy. Um, and the other book is Silver Brumby's Daughter and Silver Brumby's of the South. One of these, I think they are running from a forest fire as well. Um, I don't really remember lots about them. I just remember being absolutely enthralled with being in the head of this lead stallion uh, while he tried to look after his family. Um, and it's a good adventure. And it, the fact that it was set at the time, I didn't really realise that it was set in Australia um, at the time of reading it. But it is something that I have realised as I've become an adult and know more about Australia. Um, so. I think that intrigued me as well was this land that was completely alien that sounded nothing like America or what I knew of America and sounded nothing definitely nothing like the UK um, and all these other strange animals that I'd never really heard of so koalas and um, the like and kangaroos um, that were kind of more abstract rather than solid animals in my mind at that time so 
again another one they're really good adventure stories i think they are more for the older of the middle grade age range so the 9 to 12 um, than they are for the younger um, so i did read these when i was a little bit older um round about when i hit my teens um but yes it was a very successful recommendation from my sister for a change instead of the other way around and then the final book here that i'm going to talk about is um in a set of books that is in special covers which are very very precious to me they were all gifts um but i have a whole group of these in these covers um and it's the only copy I have of this particular book, which is why I'm showing it to you. But that is, the book is Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. I think I've only read this particular version once. Like I say, it's um, once I was, I was gifted about half a dozen, eight of these at the time that they were released back in the late 80s, um, early 90s. They are red leather bound with gold detailing on them. I don't have the full collection of these books, um, but I do have a few of them. I have since looked up other books um, that are in this particular publishing and they're very expensive um, for books. I think one particular book that I was looking at possibly getting, I was looking at a couple of hundred pounds for this particular version of it, um, let alone recommended retail price which back in the 80s you were looking at less than you know for this you're probably looking eight nine ten pounds which would have been expensive back then but um but now uh, a couple of hundred pounds yes not even i could uh stomach paying that amount of money for a book um just to uh, complete a collection um at this time but yes uh back to the actual book itself so it's black beauty by anna sewell um, if this doesn't cement the theme that you've seen running through this video, then I don't know what will. Um, but again, I remember absolutely loving this. It's about a horse called Black Beauty who we follow virtually from birth until he passes away from old age. And you follow him through all the various jobs he has in his life. So from um, a children's horse to a handsome cab horse uh he has quite a few adventures and he tells you all about the people that he has loved and the people he doesn't like um the perils that he goes through so there is a stable fire which um threatens him um but yes and it's one of those books that i just absolutely remember and come back to time and time again um and absolutely loved reading as a, a child and i think i actually read this into my i think it's one of the few that i actually carried through into my late teen years um as well as reading moving on to the more adult books i think that's possibly because this was quite an adult book um for me to read at that time so there are um there are lots of other books i read as a child like i say i read a lot of enid blyton i read charles dickens i know i've said that in past videos i read charles dickens between the ages of eight and twelve um absolutely loved oliver twist i think that's probably the only dickens book that and a christmas carol that i would probably get on with as an adult now i tried rereading david copperfield last year and i had to um dnf it um so i don't think that i would actually choose to read dickens now all the books I've shown you are ones that I've considered rereading and are ones that when I've gone through books um, as a child through into my teen years and into my adult years, they are ones that I've insisted on keeping. Um, so they are ones that, you know, they are ones that eventually I either saw nephews and nieces being able to borrow or wanted to reread myself again in future. Do you have any childhood favourites that you want to talk about? If you do, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you enjoyed as well. Um, I really enjoyed discovering new books, especially as I have um, a nephew who's very much into reading. I like to see recommendations to pass on to my sister and to him. Um, and if you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up. And if not already, please subscribe to the channel and I will see you all again soon. Bye.